All right. So the example that we are going to take here is there to make you feel the difference between the effect of a headwind and tailwind on takeoff performance. We will also discuss how to use a performance table for calculating the values. Remember, this is the only time that I'm going to go into depth how to use a performance table and further on, whenever I mention any performance table, you know already how to use it. Let's say an airplane has to depart from an airport with an airport elevation of 30 feet, means 11. Temperature is 16 degrees Celsius and the altimeter setting is 2 niner, niner zero inches of mercury. Based on that, we calculate our pressure altitude and our density altitude. We discuss what is pressure altitude and density altitude in our instrument rating course already. So using the formula of pressure altitude and density altitude, we get pressure altitude as 50 feet and density altitude as 170 feet MSL. Now let's see what effect does a headwind or a tailwind have on takeoff performance and by how much. So for this day, let's take the weight of the airplane to be 2550 pounds and we look at the chart for the weight and then go for the temperature and pressure altitude. We see that for 16 degrees Celsius, we need to interpolate between the 10 degree and 20 degree value tables. How to interpolate is simple. Get the difference between the values. The ground roll value will be 925 for 10 degrees and 995 for 20 degrees. Get the difference. The difference is 70. Divide this difference by 10 since the difference between 10 and 20 is 10. So divide the difference 70 by the other difference 10. Now multiply this value by 6 since 16 degrees is 6 degrees away from 10 degrees. Whatever you get should be added to the 10 degree value. So for example, in this case, with the difference between 925 and 995 is 70. We divide it by 10, we get 7. We multiply 7 by 6, we get 42. And we add 42 to 925 and we get 967 feet. This is the value for the ground roll. Now, to make things simpler, let's just take 15 degrees, which is the midpoint of 10 and 20. So now the calculation would be just to find the midpoint of 925 and 995, which comes about 960. This is easier because all you need to do is find the difference 70 divided by 2, 35, add 35 to 925 or subtract it from 995. You will get the same that is 960. So let's take 15 degree value for simplicity. Similarly, we calculate the total feet required to clear 50 feet obstacles from the table by interpolating between 10 and 20 degree values and we get around 1633 for about 15 degrees Celsius. So these are the values for our performance today. Now let's consider the effect of headwind and tailwind into this performance. First of all, let's read the notes around the table. This is a table for Cessna 172S NAV3, short field takeoff distance at 2550 pounds. Conditions are flaps 10 degrees, full throttle prior to brake release, paved level dry runway, zero winds, lift off at 51 knots indicated airspeed and speed at 50 feet would, should be 56 knots indicated. That is our performance table and then you have some notes below them. Short field technique as specified in section 4, which is the normal procedure section. Prior to takeoff from fields above 3000 feet pressure altitude, the mixture should be lean to give maximum RPM at full throttle static run up. Decrease distances 10% for each 9 knots of headwind, and for operations with tailwinds up to 10 knots, increase distance by 10% for each 2 knots. For operation on dry grass runway, increase distances by 15% of the ground roll figure. We will discuss or we have already discussed the effects of different kinds of runways on the takeoff performance. And here it is. Grass runway is going to increase the distance by at least 50% in the ground roll figure. All right. So now to understand the effect of the wind, let's assume a nine knot headwind versus a nine knot tailwind. Very important here is to make sure you read the notes around the table. For winds, it says that decrease 10% for each 9 knot of headwind. So we know that our distances are going to be reduced by 
10% for a 9 knot headwind which is the example that we have taken and that would give us this figures for a ground rule and total feed to clear 50 foot obstacle. You see headwind reduces the distances. What happens when you have a tailwind? For operations with tailwinds up to 10 knots, increase distances by 10% for each 2 knots. So for each 2 knots, 10% which gives us for a 9 knot tailwind, it would be about 45% increase. Now, we don't even need to calculate. We know that a 10% decrease when we had a headwind compared to a 45% increase when we have a tailwind shows that a tailwind increases the takeoff distances much more than a headwind reduces if you have the same knots of headwind and tailwind. Now here is where I suggest you guys to open the POH of your airplanes or aircrafts and start calculating. Also for your help, every POH has a sample problem in the beginning for you to understand and help you to understand how to calculate the different performance figures for that particular aircraft. It is a useful tool everyone should use because every particular performance chart has different kinds of nodes different kinds of notes mean different kinds of things for different aircrafts so make sure you read the notes and the sample problem in the beginning of the performance section which is section 5 of your poh